Welcome to the video. My name is Alexi and on this channel I cover all things Azure. And today, the Data Factory saga continues. And now we are starting to step into more intermediate territory. Since in today's video, I'm going to show you how you can bulk load multiple different files from the blob storage to Azure SQL database using for each activity. I will first start by explaining how the for each activity works and then show you an actual demo how you can use it to build your own bulk loading data pipelines in Data Factory. To get most out of this video, you should be already familiar with Data Factory's parameters and dynamic content, which I have already covered in the previous videos. So if you need to refresh your memory on those, check out the links in the description. And now let's get started with the for each activity. Let's start by imagining a situation that we have a storage account. In that storage account, we have a CSV file. Then we have Azure SQL database. And in that database, we have a database table. And now we would like to copy the contents of that CSV file into that table. Of course, we can use Data Factory pipeline to do this copy and add copy activity to that pipeline. This setup will get this job done very easily. But what if we have 20 CSV files with varying columns and then we have 20 SQL tables corresponding to those CSV files. And now we would need to add 20 copy activities to our pipeline to handle this situation. As you probably realize, building this will become very inconvenient fast when we have a lot of files coming in and we need to write them to the corresponding tables. But we have a solution for this. We can wrap this copy activity into for each activity and then only have one copy activity that we will loop through several times. In this case, 20 times. Now let's check out in more detail how this for each activity works in the data factory. For each activity in the data factory is another control activity like the conditional activities that we covered in the previous video. And here we can see how the for each looks in the data factory UI. The for each takes in an array of items that is basically a list of items and loops through that list, executing all the activities inside the for each for those items. Here I have an example how this kind of an array would look like that we could pass down to the for each activity. In this example, I have just two files or strings representing files in the array. Almost all activities can be added inside the for each activity, but with some limitations like that we cannot add another for each activity inside another for each activity. During execution, the for each activity will run all the activities for every item in the list. So basically, if we have a list of two items, the for each activity will execute those activities two times. And if we have a list of 100 items, the for each activity will execute those activities 100 times. Now let's check out how the for each logic works. Here we have our for each activity. Inside that activity, we have another activity that we would like to execute as part of our for each logic here. Then we have our array of items. In this case, we have three items that we are going to pass down to our for each activity. The values in this array could be any data type that are supported in the data factory. So basically we could have an array of strings or maybe array of integers, or in some cases we could even have an array of objects that we could pass down to the for each activity. In this case, I'm just representing the items as item one, item two, item three to simplify this example. Inside the activities in the for each activity, we are going to reference these items with the reference at item. This will fetch the current item in the loop from the list of items that we're running in the for each activity. So during the iteration one of our for each activity, this at item reference will fetch item one for our array and use that value in our activities. And after we have executed all the activities in the for each activity, we start over and now we have again the item reference. But since this is the iteration number two, we're going to now fetch the item two from our list using the at item reference. And after our second iteration is done, then we have the iteration three, and then we are going to again use the add item reference and fetch the item three from our list. And this is the last iteration. So after we are done executing all the activities for this iteration, then we are ready to continue forward from the for each activity. Now we have covered the basics of the for each activity. Next, I will open up the data factory and show a demo how you can use the for each activity to build your own bulk loading data pipelines. Before jumping into data factory, I will use this animation to illustrate to you what we are going to build here. 
We start by having a storage account. In that storage account we have two CSV files with different column names. And then we have Azure SQL database. In that database we have corresponding tables for those CSV files. Then we are going to build a data factory pipeline to handle the copy from the storage account to Azure SQL database. For this we are going to use the for each activity. In that activity we are going to have a copy activity, then we are going to set the pipeline parameters and have our file list there. So our CSV files are going to be animals and movies. Then we are going to pass down these parameters to our for each activity and use the reference pipeline parameters file list to be able to fetch these parameters to our item list. Now we can jump into data factory and set up this first part of this demo in there. Now we are in the data factory. I will open the storage account to show you that I have already created a tutorial 8 source folder where I have those CSV files. In those CSV files I have added some data into them. In the animal files we have three rows and the header and in the movies files we have also three rows and the header. Then we can open the SQL Server Management Studio and check out our database. In the database we don't actually have those two tables yet. So we are going to use the data factory to create those tables us for during the copy activity. And I will show how that's done later in this video. But now we want to create a database schema where we are going to add those two tables. So let's use create schema statement and create tutorial 8 sync schema. And now we can head back to the data factory. And let's first create a new folder for our pipeline. Let's call this tutorial 8. And now let's add a pipeline to our tutorial 8 folder. And let's name our pipeline according to our naming conventions. Then we want to add our pipeline parameters. So let's create a parameter called file underscore list and change the type to an array. And as a default value, I will add the list that has two strings, animals and movies. Next, let's add our for each activity to this pipeline, which can be found under iterations and conditionals. Now let's name our for each activity to for each item in the file underscore list. Now let's open the settings tab of our for each activity. As we can see, we have three possible settings here that we can configure. First, we have the sequential setting, meaning that if we would tap this setting on, it would run our iterations after one another and not in parallel. If we do not tap this, the for each will run our iterations in parallel to each other. And then we have the batch count setting. This setting is used to control how many parallel executions we have running at the same time, if we are not using the sequential option. For now, we are not going to touch the sequential or the batch count setting for this demo, but it is mandatory to configure the items for our for each activity. And for our items, we want to use the parameter file underscore list to add items to this for each activity and loop through that list. Then we want to add copy data activity inside this for each activity and let's name our copy data activity to copy data from blob to SQLDB. And now we have configured the first part of our solution. Next, let's open up the presentation again and let's see what we are going to configure next. The next step is to configure the data sets for our source and do our sync. Let's start with the source data set and then let's create the sync data set. Then we are going to create a parameter for our source data set and also a parameter to our sync data set. Then we are going to use the item reference to reference the item in our list. For the source data set we are going to actually also add a concat function to be able to add .csv ending to our file name. And for our sync data set it is enough just to use the item reference since we are not going to add any prefixes or suffixes to our table names. And after this we have configured everything in order to copy those two CSV files from the storage account to SQL database. So let's go back to the data factory and configure these things there. Let's start with the source dataset configuration. Let's create a new folder for our datasets called tutorial 8. Let's create a new dataset. Let's select Azure Blob Storage and then we want to select delimited text since we have CSV files and let's name our dataset and then let's select our Blob Storage. Then we want to select our container and then we can click OK. Next, let's configure the file name parameter for our dataset and then let's use that file name parameter in our file path for the dataset in the file name part of the path. Let's go back to our pipeline and let's select our newly created dataset as our source dataset. And as we can see, now we have the dataset 
parameter available here in the copy activity. And since we have those .csv endings in our files and in the, our file list parameter we don't have those, we need to add them dynamically to this parameter. So we're going to just use the quick concat function here to add that .csv ending to our file names. And of course use the item reference to reference the actual file name in the list that we're passing down to the for each activity. Next let's create our sync dataset. And now we want to search for SQL database. Let's select Azure SQL database and let's name our dataset according to our naming conventions. And let's select our database from the linked service list since we have only one there, it is easy to pick. And let's leave the table name empty for now. And let's click OK. And now let's add table name parameter to this dataset. And let's use that parameter to replace our table name. And to keep things simple, let's just hard code the schema name that we created in the beginning of this demo to our schema name field. So it is tutorial 8 sync. Now let's choose this dataset to be our sync dataset in our copy activity. And let's configure the table name to use the item from our item list that we are passing down to the for each activity. So basically our dataset name or the table name is going to be animals or movies, depending on the iteration that we are running in the for each activity. And as you can remember, we didn't have those tables ready in the SQL database. So we have the data factory option to create those tables. So let's choose the auto create table in the table option. And now we have configured everything and we are ready to run this pipeline. But let's go first back to the presentation so I can show you what will happen when we run this pipeline. When the pipeline execution begins, we are going to pass down our pipeline level parameters to our for each activity as items because we have the pipeline parameters reference there. Then our first iteration of our for each activity begins. And in the first iteration we are processing the animals file. So we are going to pass down the animal string from our list to our dataset parameters. So our source dataset parameter is going to be animals.csv and our sync dataset parameter is going to be just animals. Then these files will be passed down to our datasets and the pipeline will fetch the animals.csv from our storage account and write it to animals table in our Azure SQL database. After this copy has gone through, we are done with the first iteration of our for each loop. So we can start the second iteration or these executions could be actually happening in parallel depending on our for each activity settings. And during our second iteration we are just going to copy the movies.csv to the table called movies. And after this copy is done we are done with our for each activity. Now let's see this same thing happen in practice in the data factory. So we can click the debug button and start debugging our data factory pipeline. Our debug run starts running and it should complete quite quickly. And now it is already done and we can see that our copy activities went through fine and some rows were written to the Azure SQL database. And now let's open up the management studio and let's see if we have those tables here. And as you can see we have tutorial 8 sync animals table here and tutorial 8 sync movies table here. So it seems that the copy from the blob storage to Azure SQL database went through fine. Now let's check out that if we have some data in these tables. Let's first select everything from our animals tables and we can see that we have those three rows there and then let's do the same thing for our movies table and we can also see that we have three rows there as well. So everything worked perfectly here. Last thing that I'm going to show you that we cannot actually nest another for each activity inside another for each activity. As you can see, we cannot add another for each activity into this for each activity. If we would need to add two activities on top of each other, we would actually have to create a new pipeline where we would add that other for each activity and then run a pipeline in this for each activity to run that other for each activity. So this is quite a limitation in the data factory, but that is how it is and we have to live with that limitation here. Now you should have the knowledge how to build a basic bulk loading data pipeline in Data Factory. In the upcoming videos, I'm going to show you how you can use the for each activity to build more generalized bulk loading data pipelines that will make building your end to end data solutions way more efficient and faster. So stay tuned for those videos. And before ending this video, I would like you to know that making these videos takes a huge chunk of my free time. So I would highly appreciate if you would leave a like to this video and subscribe to my channel for more Azure and Data Factory content. And if you have any suggestions what you would like to see me cover in the upcoming videos, I would like to hear them in the comment section down below. Now I thank you for watching 
and see you in the next video.